Welcome to the Anglican Parish of Gisborne for our service of morning prayer on this, the 24th of October. Today we are following the lectionary with Pentecost 22b. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather together virtually in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. Let us pray. God of wonders, whose purpose is to save the lost and bring back with rejoicing those who went away in tears, have pity on us and open our eyes. Restore to your church the vision of a world made new and give to your people the strength to take up again the work of Christ in announcing the coming of your kingdom. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to hear God's holy word through the scriptures, open our hearts and minds, Lord. Amen. A reading from Job chapter 42, beginning at the first verse. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him, and each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also has seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Kezia, and the third Karen Hapuch. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations, and Job died old and full of days. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me. From every fear, those who look on him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed. They'll 
never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his saints. He will deliver them. He will deliver them. from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 7, beginning at verse 23. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it's fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Then they came to Jericho. 
As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. When thinking about this week's gospel reading, at first my mind kept going to the name of the blind beggar. To start with, it's a rarity in the gospels that any of those whom Jesus healed are named. And then Bartimaeus is a rare baby's name, especially these days, so rare that it's not even ranked in the US birth lists. Yet it's a familiar name to me, and I'm sure countless millennials like my daughter-in-law who are fans of the Harry Potter series. In this, we find two characters, father and son, named Bartimaeus Crouch. Barty Crouch Sr. is the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Now, could there possibly be anything even remotely similar about him and Bartimaeus the beggar? Barty Crouch comes across as a person seeking to thwart Harry Potter. Some see him as evil. However, he didn't set out to destroy his family or break the law. He just didn't want to believe what was going on. So, while physically able-sighted, he was blind to what was happening around him until it was too late. By contrast, the Gospels Bartimaeus is initially physically blind, but very much aware and believing of what is going on around him, which leads to him gaining his sight. He knows that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, is far more important and powerful than his title as a Nazarene would suggest. Bartimaeus recognises Jesus as a son of David, a title to be associated with a miraculous healer at the very least, but maybe even a Messiah. He is so certain that when the crowds try to stop him, he cries out all the more loudly. Now, last week we heard that Jesus had instructed the 70 not to delay on their mission to heal and proclaim the coming of God's kingdom. But today we hear of Jesus walking on the way to his triumphal entry into Jerusalem with an expectant crowd following and stopping for a man sitting by the way. Jesus calls Bartimaeus. This invitation is a calling to participate more fully in life. Bartimaeus's response is, to give up his only possession, his cloak, a garment that would have provided some protection against the elements, given some dignity, and when laid out in front of him, a means of gathering arms. So Bartimaeus leaves everything to follow Jesus and to be made whole. Jesus' question to Bartimaeus is the same one that he asked a little earlier to the sons of Zebedee. What do you want me to do for you? Unlike James and John, who asked for positions of power in Jesus' kingdom, the blind man asked for his sight, which Jesus grants, telling him, go, your faith has made you well. Telling him to go is Jesus' direction to embrace the life given to him. He no longer needs to sit and beg. Bartimaeus grabs this opportunity with both hands and follows Jesus on the way to the cross and salvation. Jesus has given wholeness to Bartimaeus, 
and allows wholeness for us and all who have faith in him as the son of God and are open to receiving it. And what was it that Bartimaeus cried out to attract Jesus' attention and show his faith? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is often quoted as the basis for what we now know as the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Luke recalls Jesus telling the parable of two petitioners in the temple. One of them, a tax collector, prays, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And this can be traced further back to the Psalms and so has a long history. The Jesus prayer is one of the shortest prayers and so can be prayed even when we have only a few seconds. Nevertheless, when taken to heart, it carries a real punch. It begins with Lord. This is a reminder to us that we belong to God. Jesus is the name Mary was told to give to her newborn child, meaning God saves. And we have our salvation in Jesus. Christ is a recognition that Jesus fulfills the promises made in the Old Testament for someone to be set apart for us. Son of God recalls that Jesus and the Father are one. Have mercy on us. We are asking for more than forgiveness. We are seeking to be included in God's gracious kindness. Noting in our prayer that we are a sinner is an acknowledgement that at times we miss the mark of being like Christ. So can I encourage you to pray the Jesus prayer, either in its full form or an abbreviated one, as Bartimaeus did? But not only once, or just for this week, but for the rest of your lives. Also, those who'd like to use meditation to open themselves to hearing the Holy Spirit may find the mantra, Lord Jesus, have mercy, to be particularly helpful. Give it a go. What have you to lose? And you have so much you can gain. The Lord be with you. response to Jesus, son of David, is have mercy on us. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. We give you thanks that you come to us in weakness, born into an oppressed race. We pray for the people of the world, for those crushed by daily hardship, 
or broken by political oppression, for those suffering from famine and disease. We pray for all who spend their lives working for a more just world. Help us to set aside arrogance and self-importance, and to those who govern, give wisdom, integrity, and a determination to seek the common good. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We give you thanks that you come to us in obedience and humility. We pray for your holy Catholic Church, for church agencies that care for the hungry and the homeless, for agencies that provide care for children and the aged. Within our Anglican Communion here in Melbourne, we pray for the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence, for Anglicare Victoria, and for Benitas. We pray for all who will answer your call and spend their lives in your service. Particularly at this time, we pray for Deborah Susan Safri Collins, preparing for her ordination to the priesthood. Help us to set aside trappings of pomp and power and enable us to fulfil our mission to bring your good news to the world. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We give you thanks that you come to us teaching us ways of forgiveness and love. We pray for the community in which we live, the Shire of Macedon. We pray for our townships, Bulungarook, Gisborne, South Gisborne, Riddles Creek, and Macedon, Mount Macedon. We pray for our families and all whom we love, for those whom we share our daily lives, for all the people of this state. We give thanks that we are now enjoying even more freedom, but help us to be responsible in our relationships to one another. Help us set aside selfishness and greed and all that destroys community. Stir in us a need for each other and a commitment to the welfare of all. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We give you thanks that you come to us experiencing all the pains of human life. We pray for all in need of your tender consolation, for those stripped of dignity and self-respect, for those whose labour is exploited or taken for granted, for those sick in heart, mind or body. We pray for those who spend their lives in bringing healing and comfort to others, particularly praying for our frontline workers who are helping to bring wholeness to those who are suffering from COVID. Help us to set aside self-interest and pride and to give and receive care that is needed. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We give you thanks that you gave your life, that we might inherit eternal life. We remember all who have died in faith and all whom we have loved. Help us to set aside all that prevents us from serving you, that we, with all your saints, may come to the place you prepare for us and eat with you at your heavenly banquet. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We offer our prayers together as we pray. Through the gift of your Holy Spirit, you have united your people in the confession of your name. Lead us by the same Spirit to show to the whole earth one mind in faith and one faith for justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Notices for today, I draw your attention first to the annual meeting of parishioners. Nominations are now called for and will be required to be in my hands by the close of business hour, 5pm on Friday the 29th of October 2021. For the point of view of those who are living outside the Macedon Ranges in the Melbourne local government area, uh, for the purposes of this Act, it is fine for you to send an electronically signed copy to me at gisbonvicar at bigpond.com. Also a reminder that all reports are due at the office by Friday afternoon as well. A reminder if you got you can take some spare books from the op shop which we cannot sell and need recycling. Uh, a good box load for your wheelie bin uh, would be appreciated. There's a, a lot of things changed during the week, some of them daily, and even the pew sheet as I prepared it is slightly out of date already. It was like swimming through a lot of paperwork this week and I felt somewhat suffocated. And I thank Nigel, and I'll put the cartoon up here now, for this um, very clever reminder. And yes, that is me, with one of my football umpire flags, surrendering. So quick answers. Do you need to be vaccinated to attend church? Yes, for all services, except for the Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. one at St. John's, Riddles Creek. That is an all-comers service, and the only requirement is the density quotient and wearing a mask. Your vaccination status must be recorded if you are on any rostered duty that is either in the church, on the grounds, the op shop, the food centre. You must uh, let me know your, by showing me your digital certificate or record of immunisation in terms of uh, where you are at the moment. Only I keep that and with the help of the COVID marshals they will uh, relay to me um, if they have cited those appropriate things. Um, <clears throat> you don't have a smartphone, uh, you can still sign in manually and the COVID officers will help you. Uh, all the other things I do believe to be true. So um, please bear with us as we put these things into practice. During the course of the services this weekend, I am going to have read what's called the Sea Quiz, which is whosoever in Latin. And it uh, is calling for anyone who knows any just cause or impediment, while the Reverend Deborah Safri Collins should not be ordained to the priesthood to come forward and speak now. If there's no impediment alleged at any of the services on this weekend, uh, it'll be the pleasure of the parish wardens and myself to sign this so that Deborah, as the Archbishop has indicated his desire, will be ordained on November the 27th in the first session of ordinations at St Paul's Cathedral. This at this stage is looking like an uh, invitation-only event. However, on the Sunday the 28th, Deborah will be presiding at her first Eucharist and that will be a much freer event in terms of numbers. So please continue to pray for Deborah as she now begins this final journey or final month journey towards her ordination to the priesthood. Today's Chacon is played on the Willis organ by Dr Diane Gome and is raucously accompanied by the late native birds of the area and I think that just adds to its charm. So thank you, Diane, and thank you, everyone, for your continued support. Mm. 